Today I'll be showing you how to paint an Urukai warrior from the Lord of the Rings miniatures game by Games Workshop. Now you can use this step by step guide to either speed paint your army or if you follow the additional steps you can also get loads of extra details, highlights and other things to make your miniatures stand out on the tabletop like various rust effects or even the white hand of Saruman. I've got a few tips and tricks to help you get the best out of your miniatures no matter your skill level but this is really just the beginning of the Isengard army that I'm creating for our Lord of the Rings campaign that I'm doing with my friends. So you can subscribe for future basing guides and other painting tutorials. But now let's get into the tutorial. Starting out, we are going to undercoat this miniature in Chaos Black spray paint. Alternatively, you can just base coat it using a pot of paint. Once it's undercoated black, the next step is to use Lead Belcher base paint from Citadel. Now make sure you always give metallic paint a shake in order to mix any separate paint inside. We're going to base coat all of the armor including the chainmail and plate armor in this metallic paint. Now you don't need to be neat at this point but make sure your paint is not too thick. You don't want to leave visible brush strokes on the miniature that reappear in later steps. I'd recommend using an older brush since metallic paints ruin paintbrushes due to the metal pigments effect within them. After using metallic paints, I'd also suggest changing your water as well. You don't want to end up with bits of sparkly glitter that you accidentally apply to your model later. So now we've base coated our Urukai armor in lead belcher. We're secondly going to be using Black Templar contrast paint from Citadel all over the chainmail and armor. Again, you can be quite messy, but but make sure you use the contrast paint sparingly. It's very thick and you can easily lose detail by slathering it on really thickly. Be sure to spread it out evenly across the miniature and try to disperse any areas of pooling or puddling paint as you go. Otherwise it will dry with a weird sort of glossy finish to it. Usually I don't use contrast paints but the effect of overlaying metallics with contrast paint creates this dull metallic look just like the Urukais from the movie and it matches perfectly. Next for step number three we're going to be dry brushing lead belcher over the armor. Now before you do this you're going to need to wait until the contrast paint has dried fully. And then in order to dry brush you're going to want to get an old makeup brush. I use my wife's makeup brush. Hopefully she doesn't watch this video and you also need some kitchen paper. Dip your wife's makeup brush into the lead belcher and then rub it across the kitchen paper. We are basically rubbing the dry paint into the bristles. So the paint looks like it's almost gone. But as you can see, it still leaves this slight amount of paint on the brush. And now we're going to apply it to the model in a downwards motion avoiding the areas that would be in shadow otherwise. And because we're stroking only downwards, we're creating areas that would be in shadow because you've got to imagine that the light is coming from above. So we're adding highlights from above by doing this. You can see how the dry brush technique brings back all that detail by highlighting the chainmail links in a subtle way. Next, we're going to use Non Oil, a wash from Citadel. And we're going to apply this sparingly to the areas of armor especially in the recesses or areas of shadow. It will sink into the chainmail and give it a more three dimensional look. And it also slightly dulls down the shiny dry brush that we just applied to the miniature, but in a much more subtle way than using contrast paint again. Next, we're going to be using Iron Breaker, a metallic layer paint from Citadel. This paint can be used to add further highlighted details to the armor. If you are speed painting, you can skip this step and move on to the next one though. I'm just going to get a thin detail brush and go over the raised edges of the armor to further create reflectivity to the metal. Obviously the Urukai would be in battle so you can imagine the edges of their plate armor clashing up against one another just like a freshly sharpened knife. Don't go nuts on this step, less is definitely more. I like to highlight the very edges of the chest armor and the raised sections and edges of the helmet mainly, since this is where most of the viewer's attention will be around the face. You can also add scratches to the armor where he might have received a beating for using his wife's makeup brush. Next you can add some rust using various different effect paints. The Urukai force was created rapidly and I don't think their armor was treated against rusting. 
I'm using one of the Army Painter Dry Rust Effect paints, which I'll be dabbing on areas of the armour that may have collected water and began to rust. It's easy to get carried away with these effects, but less is definitely more in this step. And if you make a mistake, just correct it by wiping it away with a tissue or your finger. The smeared mark it creates actually adds to the effect of the rust. Once dry, we can go over the rusted areas with Agrax Earthshade, only using splotches in specific areas of the armor this time, instead of washing the whole miniature. Now the armor is completely done, so next we're going to be doing the skin and leather together, starting with blocking in the skin using Mornfang Brown, a base paint from Citadel. This is a dirty sort of skin color brown that represents the mud covered Urukai from Helm's Deep. Don't worry though, we will be adding those sort of deep red undertones that you can see from Urukai later on. I should probably mention as well just how difficult it is to kind of come up with a paint scheme to Urukai because in pretty much all the movies, the only close up we ever see is in the darkness at the battle for Helm's Deep. Make sure you take your time around the armor you just finished. The main bits you need to paint are the exposed legs, the bottom of the face, which is visible through the helmet, and the arms which have the elbow visible as well. The hands are wearing leather gloves though, so we will paint those afterwards. Don't worry about going over the leather straps for now, as you base coat the flesh. Just avoid getting any paint on the finished armor. Next we're going to be doing the leather on the Urukai using Rhinox Hide, a base layer paint from Citadel. We're going to be using this to block in the leather parts on the Urukai miniature, which includes the gloves, the loincloth rag that's kind of wrapped around its waist, visible underneath the chainmail there, the leather gloves, and also the straps under their arms that hold the armor onto them, not to mention the belt buckle on their back as well. We'll also be painting their hair as well. Once again, take care not to paint over the metal armor as you do this, but you can repaint areas of skin with Mornfang Brown should you need to. Next we will use Steel Legion's Drab to highlight the leather areas that we just painted. If you want to create more of a transition from dark to light, you can mix a bit of Rhinox Hide with some Steel Legion Drab in order to create a transition from dark to light brown. Apply this to the raised areas of leather loincloth to give the appearance of folded cloth. Then highlight the top of the leather straps, but don't go all the way under the arms in order to create the appearance of shadow under the miniature. You see, miniatures are small, and if we can exaggerate shadows, it just makes them look more realistic. The same can be said for the leather straps on the boots and also the belt on his back as well. Just highlight the upper ridge to create the appearance of worn leather. Finally, we can highlight the gloves and specifically the fingers but you can ignore the hand on the shield side since this area will probably be cast into shadow, into darkness. After this, we'll mix in some white or you shabby bone into the Steel Legion drab to make it even brighter. Then we'll go over the same areas creating extreme highlights. To do this, you can put a dot of paint on the edges of the fingers or leather straps just along the ridge here to show the worn leather. And this just makes everything look three-dimensional. Now, if you're struggling with this level of detail, try leaning against something to steady your hand. I'm leaning the side of the brush on the ridge of the belt to create the straight line here. And then I'm putting some scratches on the tabard. And finally, adding the finishing touches to the leather gloves and finger highlights. Next, we'll be using Agrag's Earthshade, a shade wash from Citadel. Now, new painters have a habit of dousing the miniature in Agrax like they're trying to put out a fire. But if we instead get some Agrax on a plate and then we water it down with 50% water, we can achieve much more subtle effects with more control. You can see my consistency of paint here. Now with this mix, we're going to apply the Agrax shade to the miniature purposefully, spreading it over the skin and leather areas, including the hair as well, and the gloves. Don't apply it to the black armor we did earlier. It is faster just to like yeet it over the miniature, but it ends up making the whole miniature look brown and just the same and boring. So take your time, make sure it doesn't pull too much in the recesses or you'll get a glossy puddle appearing. 
You can, however, have some fun just putting it a little bit at the bottom of the chainmail to make it look a little bit rusty or kind of like it's been dragged through the mud a little bit as well. Once dry, we are going to get our Mournfang Brown back and we're going to go over the skin again, but this time we only apply it to the areas of raised muscle. Avoid the shadowy recesses like underneath the legs. Don't forget the arms and face as well. Take your time doing this step that you don't accidentally go over the leather straps that you spent ages on too. Next we're going to be mixing some Mornfang Brown with some World Bearers Red. Now this creates the classic reddish brown Urukai skin from the movies. We will now apply this to the legs but only targeting the muscle bulges to create this sort of pumped look. And then finally we will use a bit of World Bearers Red with you shabby bone and with this you want to make really thin lines across the muscles. Kind of like what you'd see in a scientific diagram of, of a muscle with a sort of like strenu of muscles. It kind of just makes the muscles look like they're kind of bulging outwards and these are really strong Urukai troops. We can also use Wraithbone for the teeth and wash it afterwards with Agrax Earth, Shade Wash from Games Workshop. Next we can use Screaming Skull, which is kind of like a white paint, to add the Hand of Sauron effect to the miniature. This is optional and you can put it on a shield, the chest or boots or even the helmet. Completely up to you. I would however suggest that you practice this a few times. Make sure you thin your paint because white paint is notorious for being very chalky. Then you're going to want to paint a C shape and above that you can paint the middle finger, then two fingers to the left and one index finger to the right and then finally the thumb. It takes some practice but if you paint this 10 times broken into those steps you will get the hang of it and after you're confident enough you can go ahead and paint the white hand of Sauron onto your miniature. Thinning your paint to the right consistency is key here. And this is the finish hand of Sauron. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Now if you're wondering how I did that base, I'm going to have a basing guide and I'll link it just over here or in the description as soon as it comes out. But it's basically a tutorial on how to make these miniatures look awesome on their bases using really cheap products. So I recommend following that next. But if you found this video helpful, do drop a like because it really helps support the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.